Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I just thought I'd do a quick supplementary video this week because I spotted something on the charts that I think really does bear a mention. Um, before I get into that, um, on this sunny Friday afternoon on the 26th of February 2021, um, just take you through a risk warning because um, it's just a question of housekeeping for compliance purposes. But nonetheless, what I'm going to be talking about here is a couple of interesting patterns that I, as a technical analyst, analyst are going to be watching quite closely over the course of the next few days. And that's simply because, as an analyst, um, first and foremost, I'd like to see evidence of a potential turnaround, a potential reversal, or a potential for a particular price move to take place. And one of the reasons, one of the things that I use to do that, something called correlation. Um, certain markets correlate with each other quite nicely. And one of the things I've noticed, and you, you, may, you may have seen that I've got three charts up in front of me. One of the things I've noticed over the course of the past few months is how copper prices um, have, I think, more or less tracked the rise in stock markets. If we look at, say, for example, the S&P 500 here, we can see that it has slowly embarked on a slow move higher from the March lows of last year. And it's been a fairly steady move. Yes, we've seen the occasional pullback, but nonetheless, we've seen a fairly decent progression higher. However, in the last couple of weeks, there is some evidence of a potential turnaround in sentiment, but more than anything, we obviously need to break below this, this trend line here. And ultimately, correlations are only as good as when they stop working, and then they're no good at all. Um, so we do have to also bear in mind that sometimes when a correlation breaks down, it can catch us out. So we can't just look at the correlation all by itself. So let's look at copper prices. So copper prices here, again, nice steady uptrend. And again, um, the occasional pullback, but nonetheless, we have gone steadily higher from those March lows up until the last couple of days where we have really accelerated higher um, since the beginning of February um, on supply versus demand concerns. Ultimately, the use of copper in renewables, in electric cars, in battery technology, solar technology has driven a massive move higher. But we've now slipped back a little bit and we posted a key day reversal or a bearish key day reversal um, on the daily candlestick chart. Now that might suggest that we're due a little bit of a pullback. Um, and in conjunction with those mining stocks, what we've all sorry, those those copper prices, we've also seen mining stocks move higher as well. Companies like Anglo American, BHP Billiton, Rio Tinto. But I've noticed something on the Anglo American chart which really does intrigue me. For someone who likes looking at Japanese candlestick charts, this is called an island doji reversal. And generally, it's a warning sign that upward momentum is starting to run out of steam. And we could be, ab we could be about to embark on a little bit of a retest lower. Um, so what's going to be the catalyst for that test lower? Well, for a start, we'll need to take out this series of lows through here. Ultimately, any type of reversal pattern always needs confirmation. So you can't just say there's a doji reversal, we're going to go down. It doesn't work like that. What it, you, you need confirmation of the particular move. So what we'd want to see is not only Anglo-American share prices start to rotate lower, but we would need to see copper prices start to rotate lower. No market goes up in a straight line. The moves that we've seen over the course of the past few weeks are going to be susceptible to a correction. So while the overall upward trend remains intact, we are going to get pullbacks. This chart here is telling me that we could be susceptible to a little bit of a pullback and a little bit of weakness in overall copper prices, which could translate, could translate into some weakness in copper prices as well. So that's it for this brief technical analysis update on Anglo-American copper prices and broader markets in general.
Thanks very much for listening. This is Michael Hewson talking to you from CMC Markets. <laughs>